This is the pre-calculus fifth six weeks test for 2016. This test goes over sequences and series and parametric equations, and I'm going to go over this pretty quickly. Uh, problem one, uh, most of the students, vast majority got this problem right for the sequence starting in terms of negative three, comma one, comma five, what's the value of the 98th term? Well, the formula for that is going to be this one, a sub n equals a sub 1, which is the first term, plus our common difference times quantity n minus 1. And so in this case, if we want if we want a sub 98, we need to take our first term, which is going to be negative 3, plus, and to get our common difference, is going to be a sub n minus a sub n minus 1. So 1 minus negative 3, or we could take 5 minus 1, and that's going to be 4. So our common difference is 4 times we want 98 minus 1. And so it's going to be negative 3 plus 4 times 97. So that's, that's going to be our answer. So negative 3 plus 4 times 97. That's going to be it. So 385 is our correct answer, which is answer choice B. Next problem, 2. The first four terms of sequence are negative 1 half, 6, negative 72, and 864. What is the sum of the first nine terms of sequence? So for that, we have uh, what that is is our summation from n equals 1 to n, I guess. That's the basic case. That's going to be equal to our first term, a sub 1, times quantity 1, minus r to the power of n over 1 minus r. And so in this case, we have a sub 1 is going to be negative 1 half, we know that, times 1 minus, and we need to find out what r is. Well, r is equal to a sub n over a sub n minus 1. In this case, we could take negative 72 over 6 and get negative 12. So 1 minus negative 12 to the power of of uh, n, which in this case we want the first nine terms, so this could be the ninth power, over 1 minus r. And we just put this in our calculator. We put, I'll put negative 0.5 times, oh parentheses, 1 minus in parentheses, uh, negative 12, and we're going to raise that to the power of 9, and we divide that by 1 minus negative 12. Okay, we press enter, we get this, 1.98 blah 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 times 10 to the power of 8. So what that ends up being is, this thing right here, negative 198,453,090.5. And that last one, uh, we did have quite a few get that right. Okay, third one, was the sum of the following infinite series? Well, you have different ways you could do this one. One thing you could do is, uh, this thing is approximately equal to, if we take if we take uh, from n equals 1, we have 2 times 3 fourths to the power of n. And this, we can't put infinity in our calculator, but we can use a quite high number. We can use 50 or 100 or 20 or something like this. So I'm going to go to my calculator and put this in here. Is uh, We do that right here next to the 9. Press enter. We get from 
we'll say n equals 1 all the way up to 50 and that's going to be uh, 2 times full parentheses I'll put 0.75 to the power of n and that should be it we press enter we get 6 as a close approximation if we don't get if we get a, a fractionized a fraction form we can press control in ans to get form so our correct answer is 6 also there's a formula this this thing is equal to n equals 1 to infinity a sub n is equal to a sub a sub 1 over 1 minus r. In this case, we're going to have our first term is going to be 2 times 3 fourths over 1 minus 3 fourths. So what that's going to be is, is we're going to have 6 halves, so 6, no, excuse me, 6 fourths over, over 1 fourth, and that's going to be if we multiply these together, we get 6 fourths. And if we divide by the fraction, the same as multiplying by our reciprocal, we get 6 this way. So that's another way of doing the problem. Next, uh, 4. Which of these is not equivalent to the others? Well, if you just put these in the calculator, you can put A, B, and C in the calculator, and D. And D is the only one that is different from the first three answers. So D is our correct answer to four. Uh, um, number five, the first two terms, the arithmetic sequence are four and one. So A sub, so D equals A sub N minus A sub N minus one, which in this case, D is equal to four minus one, which equals three. So that's our D. And we want to find the summation. Well, the summation of an arithmetic series from uh, n equals 1 to, to n or whatever it is, a sub k of arithmetic series, is equal to a sub 1. Oh, no, it's not. It's n, no sort of terms, times a sub 1 plus our last term, a sub n, over 2. So in this case, we want to find the number of terms. Well, we have what d is, and we can find the number of terms. Let's see, 1, 39 minus 1 to get the difference between the first and the last term we get 138 and since d is 3 we take 138 divide it by 3 we get 4 4 times 3 is 12 and then we go 1 8 so 6 46 and so n is going to be equal to 46 plus 1 which equals 47 and so our answer is going to be n, uh, excuse me, n uh, is 47 times 1 plus 390, or 139, 139 over 2. So that's going to be 47 times 140 over 2. 40 over 2 is 70, so it's going to be 47 times 70. In our calculator, we put 47 times 70, we get 3,290. So that's our correct answer. 3,290. And that's answer choice D. 
Okay, next next thing, the, the bouncing ball. Next two problems are bouncing ball problems. You got a ball dropped from a height of seven feet. So what that is, is we have we have the ball being dropped seven feet. So that's our drop, and then returns to 60% of its prior height. So we turn to 67% of its prior height, and the fifth, so that's going to be 60% and 60% of that until the ball hits for the fifth time. So here's the fourth, here's the fifth. So we can add this up as the first bounce is seven. Our second bounce is going to be seven times 0.6, and that's going to be times two because we have to go up and down. And I think that's going to be it. And then plus, well, seven times two is 14. And we have 0.6 squared, and that's our third bounce, plus 14.6 to the third power, plus 14 times 0.6 to the fourth power. So all these add together will give us our correct answer. So we have seven plus 14 times 0.6 plus 14 times 0.6 squared plus 14 times 0.6 to the third power plus 14 times 0.6 to the fourth power. And so that's what we get, 25.28. And there's another way to do that too, I'll show you. So 25.28 feet will be answer choice A. Another way to do this is you can put 7 plus you can put our first term. We can go from n equals 1 and we want to go up to 4. The first term is going to be uh, 14 times 0.6 to the power of n. And if we plug this thing in here, we're going to get the same thing. Okay. Now, um, as far as the infinite series, which is the next one now, what you can do for this ball keep on bouncing until it stops, we can go up to 10 bounces like that and get pretty close and get an estimate that way. Or we could say 10 plus, we want to go from, from n equals 1 to infinity. Well, you can't really have infinity, but the second bounce, the first bounce is going to be 10 times 2, which is 20 times 0.75 to the power of n. And what you can do is just put a pretty high number in here for, so you can put in, say, 50. So let's do that. If we go to our calculator and we put in 10 for the first drop plus we get our summation here from n equals 1. And we're going to go uh, 20 times. Let's see, what was that? That was is it 0.75? Yeah, 0.75. 0.75. And that'll be to the power of n, and we're going to go all the way up to 50. Let's see what this gives us here. We press enter, we get 70. So 70 is our correct answer for that. And 70 feet. And we could have just done like we did in six and did these one step at a time and do about 10 iterations, we would get pretty close to that 70 to be able to see the correct answer. Okay, next one we're looking at is is uh, the problem 8. Okay, the front row of the section in the Majestic Theater has, has a Uh, if the number of seats in each excessive row increased by one, and there are 20 rows in section 
n, how many total seats are there in section n? Well, in this case, the number of seats in each row would increase by 1. So d is equal to 1. And we know the front row, which is a sub 1, is equal to 3. Well, a sub 20 is equal to our front row plus d, which is 1. plus 1 times 20 minus 1, right? So times 19. So we would have 3 plus 19 is equal to 22. So this is going to be a sub n is equal to 22. So we can use our formula and our summation from n equals 1 to to n of a sub n is equal to our number of rows, which is 20, times the first row plus the last row over 2. And in this case, 20 divided by 2 is 10. So 10 times 23 is going to be equal to 230 seats. So our correct answer is A. Next problem, 9. What is the uh, set of parametric equations that's consistent with the rectangular equation y equals 1 half x plus 3 halves? And I think it ends up being D, but what you do for that is we'd say x is equal to 1 plus 2t, and we solve for t, we subtract 1, so 2t equals x minus 1. If we divide by 2, t is equal to x over 2 minus 1 half. And then we replace, okay, this, oops, replace this equation right here. So we get y equals x over 2 minus 1 half and then plus 2. Well, negative 1 half plus 2 is 1 half plus 4 halves equals 3 halves. So y is equal to x over 2 plus 3 halves which is our answer choice, which is our answer up here. So D is our correct answer. Okay, an airplane gains an elevation. We have we have X equals 120T and Y equals 6T. If we, we all have most of these in terms of X of, so if we solve for Y and divide by 6, we have T equals Y over 6. And if we substitute t for y over 6, x is equal to 120 times y over 6. And 120 divided by 6 is 20, so x equals 20y. So our correct answer is c for problem 10. Okay, uh, the cliff diver, problem 11. Cliff diver takes off from a 50-foot high cliff horizontally at the rate of 10 feet per second. So that's going to be x equals uh, 10t. And then we have our equation y equals 50 minus 16t squared. So we have a parametric, set of parametric equations we can put in here. We go to get a graph page and we go to graph parametric uh, 3 minus 4 and so we have 10t, and then we have uh, 50 minus 16t squared, and then we can I'm going to go to 0 0.05, and then change our window, zoom window, window settings x min from 0 to uh, 
We'll put, give her five seconds to hit the water. And then we're going to go from, and that's fine, we'll go 50, to 60 feet up. So we tab down here, press enter, press enter again. And I see quite a bit of time there. What is wrong with that? There's something that's wrong with that. What is the, how far out? Does that go? Oh yeah. Well, let's go ahead and change the window because the answers are up to 18 feet. So I'm going to change my window for X max to be up to 20 feet here. I think we'll be good here now. There we go. And we can just go to trace, graph trace and go all the way down as we hit the water here we see that we're right at about okay we hit the water there we are 18 feet out so our correct answer is going to be d 18 feet out okay for parametric equations y equals t plus one and t minus x equals four what is the rectangular form of this equation these equations so t minus x equals four and if we add x to both sides of this equation, we get t equals 4 plus x, which we can take and replace in this one right here. So we get y equals uh, 4 plus x plus 1. So the y is going to be equal to 5 plus x. And our correct answer is A for problem 12. Okay, next, the baseball's hit from home plate toward the center field fence, 420 feet away. So if we just go here and let's go to, uh, let's go right here, tab, we go like this. Okay, it's gonna be Uh, if you trace it out, I'm going to, in the interest of time, when you trace it out, you're going to get 45 feet off. Um, 14, the basketball shot. Okay, if you, again, you go ahead and enter the equations right here. Okay, you're given the equations. X equals 10T feet. down here well, let's see I think we can leave the negative 16 T squared we get uh, 28 T 7 plus is that 28 T and then we just Go ahead and graph that. We get this kind of a shot, and you can trace the shot and get trace here. 10 feet off the ground, we're about 16 feet away. Okay, and our maximum height is going to be about 19.2 feet. So 19 feet is our closest answer. And then for this answer choice for, for problem 15, we have that. Uh, 16 was really easy. If you just substitute x for, three, x for t, we're going to have y equals x plus 3. And c is the only one that it could be. And, and for 17, if we just plug in, we get, we get uh, 3. So we get x equals 3 squared minus 2, which equals 9 minus 2. So 7 is the only thing that could be. And then the rows of seats, this is going to be followed by the equation, right, increased by 2. So we have, we have 4 plus d, which is 2, times 13 minus 1. And then we have 4 plus 2 times 12, which equals 4 plus 24 
which is 28. And I have people count out one row at a time and still get a correct answer. So here we have 28. Okay, this one right here, you take the equation, we have 4 squared plus 3 squared minus 2 times 4 times 3 times cosine of 135 degrees. And what you get for that is approximately uh, 6.48. And you put that in your calculator, 6.48. And so enter in the calculator correctly to the one, to the 10th place is going to be 6.5. So this is what I was looking for. I think you got it right anyway if you put in 6.48 or 6.47 for the rounding, but this is the way it really should look like. And then for this last one, if you just trace this up, the maximum height should be 106 feet. Okay, 106. Okay, so plus 106. That's what I was looking for. Uh, and then just just by word of warning on this one uh, that I didn't really spend time going over, this baseball one, you have to find the cosine of 20 degrees and the sine of 20 degrees and plug them in here or else you'll get an incorrect answer. And then you trace it out you get 45. And so anyway, that's the test. Uh, I think I had the better scores. A couple people missed only three. But it really shouldn't have been that bad. Good luck on this uh, next future test and thanks for viewing.